Today on Winthrop Close Up, the 2015 Annual Security Report and Crime Statistics. Also, we learn how a family is learning to cope with a very rare syndrome. Will you be one of the more than 200,000 people who are hospitalized this year because of the flu? Find out more on Winthrop Close Up. Welcome to Winthrop Close-Up. My name is Shane Shaffet. And I'm Jacob Hallex. The Winthrop University Police Department recently released the 2015 Annual Security Report and Crime Statistics, covering 2012 to 2014. Most of the numbers stayed in the same range as the last few years, with seven sexual assaults were reported in 2014, five more were reported in 2013. However, Chief Zebedis says it is important to remember that the crimes are happening whether they are being reported or not. We encourage the reporting. We accept the numbers as they are. We're not going to try to hide anything. The university is on board with this. They want, it. They want the numbers to be reported. They don't want the incidences to occur. I don't want the incidences to occur, but we would rather our students report and get the help that they need instead of keep it quiet and not tell anybody about it. The Winter Police do not expect a rise in crimes with a larger number of students on campus. To see the whole report, visit www.winthrop.edu backslash campus police. Along with cooler weather and fall, fall brings another season, flu season. Michaela Dunbar reports to us all the things you need to know, including whether the flu shot can actually make you sick. Every year, flu season arrives and typically lasts from October to May. Usually I don't get sick. I'll get the occasional seasonal cold, but I don't usually get the flu or a really bad um, virus that'll keep me out of class or something. We recommend everybody go ahead and get their flu vaccines. The more people that are immunized, the less flu we have around or the less severe the flu is. Some students feel like flu vaccinations are necessary. I haven't caught the flu once since I started taking booster shots. Some students feel like flu vaccinations are more of a detriment than a benefit. I think the only time that I've caught the flu was when I had gotten the flu shot. Flu season is officially upon us. As of 2014, less than half of Americans were vaccinated for the flu, even though there are around 30,000 deaths every year because of it. Here at Health and Counseling Services, health professionals can offer students the vaccine or they could get it at a local drugstore. Personally, I never get them because I'm afraid that if I do, that I'll just be more prone to get sick. People always say, oh, I got the flu from the flu shot. You cannot get the flu from the flu shot. And really, the flu is a virus. We treat it with uh, just some over-the-counter medicines usually or some cough medicines to help control the symptoms. Tylenol, ibuprofen, those kind of things. But um, they're welcome to come in here and we'll be happy to talk to them about it. This has been Michaela Dunbar, Winthrop Close-Up. Flu shots at the Health and Counseling Service Center are $25 and can be charged to your student account. To host more than 500 family members for the 9th Annual Family Day. Family Families of day. students spent the day on campus experiencing the fun and amenities of the university. President Dan Mahoney got into the excitement and spent the morning greeting the crowd before the academic showcase. The real fun began in the West Center where families made memories while playing basketball and participating in games before chowing down. Then I can meet my auntie. Had the chance to play pool, paint faces or tiles, and have their pictures drawn. It was all smiling and stuffed faces at this year's Family Day. Winthrop looks forward to seeing families again at Worldwide Winthrop Day. Up next on Winthrop Close Up, find out what you need to know in order to graduate on time. And later discover what local fall festivities you won't want to miss.
Have you been the victim of bullying at Winthrop? Are you feeling helpless and alone? Well, there's help right around the corner. You can find help here at the Crawford Building, located off of Scholar's Walk. The goal of counseling here at Winthrop is to help assist students in their mental and developmental issues they may have. Counseling services are open throughout the week, and appointments can be set up by using the number below. Make an appointment today so we can stop bullying at Winthrop. Welcome back to Winthrop Close Up. Even though some may not want to think about it, graduation is just around the corner. The Office of Records and Registration is encouraging students to apply for graduation on time. If you're expecting to graduate in August or December next year, then you should complete the graduation application by February 1st of next year. Students should also check their degree works to see if they have met their cultural event requirements. If you have any further questions, go to Records and Registration in Tillman Hall. Seniors looking for cultural event credits recently enjoyed Winthrop's annual banned book reading, Read Bug. Crystal Thomason brings us more on why a book would be banned. All these books, whether or not they were challenged by a large group or one individual, it opens up the conversation to talk about it. A popular event at Winthrop, the sixth annual banned book reading drew a full house. Yeah, I mean, the turnout's usually pretty good every year, so I, um, I wasn't really surprised by it. It's usually a pretty big crowd. During the event, students from Winthrop's English department perform excerpts from pre-selected banned books. You know that it's against the law to kill a virgin? So a guardian of the revolution marries her, takes her virginity before executing her. Do you understand what that means? Before each performance, a student gave a brief history on why the book was banned. Challengers have used everything from claims of graphic images to Islamophobia to put a stop to the teaching of this book in class. Other reasons why a book is banned stem from graphic images being racially offensive and encouraging homosexuality. I'm always surprised to see the children's book Tango Makes Three banned, just because it's a children's book and it's banned for homosexuality, but the penguins are, there's no like sexual nature in it because it's a book. We're a little bit different. One was named Roy and the other was named Silo. Roy and Silo were both boys, but they did everything together. And it's really inspiring how much people try and control you know, what these books have to offer. It keeps people aware of something that is happening that is affecting our schools and um, something that needs to be stopped for the sake of our young kids. Crystal Thomason, Winthrop Close-Up. For more information about banned books, check out the American Library Association website at www.ala.org slash bbooks. Now, let's go to our reporter, Reese Murray, for today's special report on a little boy and his family coping with a very rare disease. Reese? Thanks, Shane and Jacob. Throughout the year, we dedicate months to raise awareness towards multiple diseases, sicknesses, and syndromes. But how about the ones that go unnoticed because we know so little about them? I brought us to Triton Ayers home, a little boy living with trisomy 9 mosaic syndrome. Triton Ayers is a little boy learning to cope with a very rare syndrome, a syndrome that requires more than just the help of his parents on an everyday basis. This syndrome has left those coping with a lot of questions, but very little answers. And when we asked the genetic doctor, like, what do you know about this? Is he going to walk? Is he going to talk? How long is he going to live? Every single question was answered with, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Trey Ayers is one of 120 people in the entire world that has been diagnosed with trisomy 9 mosaic syndrome. It is so rare that the doctors don't even know much about it. Right? So this is his spine right here. And he's going to have to have pretty major surgery on this. Much of what Triton's family knows of the syndrome has been self-taught. And I'm very impressed at how knowledgeable um, they, Heather and Josh have become with this syndrome because there's so little known about it, but they've, they've really reached out to other families on social media that have children with this. And there's like only 120 in the whole world. And so she gets a lot of information from them. They're handling it really well, I think. Because at the drop of a hat, you know, we could be on our way up to Levine's. So I had to pull on the side of the road and um, give them CPR 
because my daughter had informed me that he was not breathing. Oh, we had to pull over because he wasn't breathing. And so we, um, so my mommy had to tilt the car, the um, car seat over, and then he was, he was still wasn't breathing. And then so my mom, my mommy had to give him CPR. Triton's family's ultimate goal is to raise money and awareness so that it can be better researched to help future children who get diagnosed with this. To follow up on Triton Ayers and his family and to continue to see how they cope on an everyday basis, you can search for him on Facebook. T-R-I-T-O-N-A-Y-E-R-S. Jacob and Shane, back to you. It's a fun family tradition. We'll show you where you can hop on a hayride and pick fresh raspberries. Plus, stay tuned to learn more about Wu ABJ and what it's doing for students on campus. Welcome back. Winthrop's Association of Black Journalists is getting students ready for the working world. Reporter Jessica Sampson gives us a look at what Wu ABJ is doing this semester. Winthrop's Association of Black Journalists gathered in Owens to give students an opportunity to learn skills that are necessary for the workforce. Your parents have probably already started using where you stay for something else. Wu ABJ is a student organization at Winthrop University and it mostly focuses on the professional field of journalism and media and we get all majors together. You do not have to be a journalism major and we basically fellowship together and we exchange internship opportunities, scholarship opportunities and just we help each other with our classes and any kind of advice you may need. Students come with their resume and business cards in hand, ready to show their accomplishments off to the media professionals. You always want to have something proofread, so when you're creating a document, you know what you want to say, and sometimes you might miss something. So it's always, hel it's always helpful if you have somebody else look at it. Uh, we do that at our office in Career and Civic Engagement so we can critique it. And I would also say, just like in your situation, I would have uh, someone from you know, whatever medium you want to go into, broadcast or whatever, have somebody like that look at it also. They might give you some different ideas than we might. Wu ABJ invites speakers to talk to students about professionalism. One freshman tells us the importance of the organization. I think it's pretty important so you can learn the field but like before your junior, senior year, so you can learn how to be a professional. So when you go in the field, you act like you don't know what you're doing when you really do know. So. This is Jessica Sampson, Winthrop Close-Up. Fall is in the air, and a local farm and market is making way for the new season. Bush and Vines Farm and Market in York, South Carolina is opening its amenities to the community so that families can be a part of the cool harvesting season. Families are able to come into the open air market to buy fresh vegetables and fruits that are in season. Not only is the food available for picking, but it also is the mile-long walking trail for families and their children. I personally love fall at the Bush and Vine. Um, it's just really pretty and there's, we have lots um, going on. Um, we have pumpkins, obviously lots of pumpkins. You can um, pick your own pumpkins. Um, a lot of people love to come out and pick their own pumpkins. Um, we also have hay rides on Saturdays, um, a corn maze. I've, I love the corn maze. That's been very popular. Um, we have a walking trail. Um, you can take a walk through, like, through the woods, kind of around the farm. It has been a part of York County for more than 150 years and plans on continuing to produce fresh fruits and vegetables for ongoing generations. For more information on the farm's activity, uh, for more information on the farm's seasonal activities, visit bushandvinesfarm.com. You know, all that talk about pumpkins and hay rides really has me looking forward to Thanksgiving. I'm going to eat a lot, a lot of pumpkin pie. Me too. I can't wait. My family always has a big get together. It's a really big deal in my family. And like you, I can't wait for some pumpkin pie. All right. Well, thank you all very much for turning into us today. 
And this has been Winthrop Close Up. You can follow us on Twitter and Facebook at Winthrop Close Up to stay up to date on campus news.